So, uh, you guys are going to actually have this video come back to you, and I'll go over which pieces of data that you guys are going to get back in the morning. Oh, we didn't cover COVID stuff. I'm sorry. Let me cover that real quick. All right, so hang on. We're not going to get all crazy about it. So masks, I do have one. Um, if I have to get close to you to work with your gadget with you, I will put one on. I do have epilepsy. It takes me about five to ten minutes uh, before hyperventilation and all kinds of mess. So um, all your gadgets have been sanitized, disinfected, lace off, and... I do have hand sanitizer in case anybody needs it. And does everybody have a mask with them? Okay, so just wanna make sure. I do have medical masks just in case. Um, but the reason why I say have them with you is because, whose phone was that? Was that this one? Hi. This thing should, oh, I was gonna say, this thing shouldn't be getting anything. Um, that's really weird. <laughs> We're gonna take that as data. But anyway, um, where was I? Oh, uh, the police are finding, no warning, $100 tickets. It's not a, hey, put your mask on. It's a, hey, here's your ticket. So, just kind of giving you guys the heads up ahead of time. Oh, they must be tired of talking about it. Honestly, I mean, I have it hanging from my ear, and smoking is a way to get out of it. So, if, as long as my vape's in my hand, <laughs> like, I'm good. If it's hanging from my ear and I'm vaping, he's not stopping. So, again, five, ten minutes is about all I can take. So, if you're on the street, you get a fine for not wearing a mask? Uh, if we're in a group, yeah. Oh, if you're in a group? Yeah. Of a certain amount or more? Um, anybody that you don't live with. Okay. So... Again, we could all say we're roommates, but... Yeah, roommates. All right, so, this has been recording the whole time. So, you guys see me in the camera? See how I'm orange and red? It's all blue around me. He's going to go straight. So, if I put this up, it's going to fluctuate based on whatever's inside the screen. So, I'll go ahead and do that demo again because everybody was watching the car. See how it moved again? All them colors changed. Mike, you need to pay special attention. So, I'm going to push it up how it changed okay so don't hit the little car man oh, you got insurance. Okay. that's the last thing I need anyway so what are we looking for in this guy this guy's actually set up for white hot black cold so Mike's gonna be looking for and you guys will be looking for tomorrow when you get the video back um, any blue or black spots that are moving intelligently so in the event that we actually have something blue in there you have a little crosshairs in the center where you can kind of line it up and you can see where the blue area is and get a temperature read. If it's a 10 degree drop, we definitely want to look into it a little bit further. Okay. okay. So you're going to hold it horizontal just like this all night long out. So like you're a cameraman all night long. Um, the red square on here, that means it's recording. If it turns to a circle, we got to hit it again and splice videos together. Okay. I'll tell you my worst cameraman, I had like 30 videos I had to splice together. It took me all damn morning. So <laughs> it's not a good time. <laughs> YouTube is not my friend. A lot of questions, right? oh, it was like really, it was like 30 videos on that thing. It was crazy. All right, so we're gonna stick this. Let's see. Good. Just Ooh, she got really it. Is she going. black or blue? I'm cold. Yeah, you're really going over there. Man, I'm red. I think I see your heart beating. Oh man. <laughs> <laughs> what about him? I know he's cold. <laughs> That's what you I'm look like. You look like uh, what's the, the superhero that turns flames on? Oh, oh my God. Ghost Rider. Oh, oh, yeah. Doc Holliday. Yeah, uh, yeah, your face is just like really, like really bright. Okay, focus. Yeah. So I'm, and that's yellow and white hot. So there's nothing. Skin is why are your eyes it? black? <laughs> it's her glasses. You oh. can't see through glasses. But hold on, her uh, heart, her heart's cold though. Cold it's not, it's gonna, It does not see in three dimensional like like a regular camera. It's only gonna sense heat. So it's gonna take her clothing. It should be colder than or her skin. The skin's gonna be warm. Okay, I got you. You see it now? Got you. All right. So these are gonna be for you. All You're right. gonna help debunk the stuff we're gonna catch on here. So I'm not about making stuff up for you guys. Again, I'm not Zach Bates. Okay. Not gonna do that. So we all know what one of these is, right? Yeah. Red dot gonna give us a temperature, temperature. of whatever is the red dot touches. Mm -hmm. It's a surface temperature only. It's not gonna give us an ambient temperature. That's what this guy's for. So let's say Mike says, he's back here, and he says, Nick, there's a blue spot on the wall. I can't figure out what's going on. First thing I'm going to do is I'm going to debunk it with the red laser. And I'm going to say, oh, it's the same temperature all the way across. I now know that the blue area is between Mike and the wall, wherever he's pointing his camera. So I'm going to use this with the probe at the top and try to find where that cold spot is and see how much of a drop in temperature it actually is. Again, I get excited about 10 degrees or more in a, in a temperature drop. So if it happens pretty quickly and pretty rapidly, 
then we know we probably have something else going on. So you're going to help us debunk some things and help prove some things. So both of those go to you. The yellow device is not exactly super active. We pull that out when we need to. I noticed you had pockets on your, oh, on your smock there, so you're good. Um, but yeah, that, that red dot, I figured you're a chicken. We don't want to be giving you anything you need to listen to. So. Well, we definitely don't want that. <laughs> Smart man. Go ahead. All right. So spirit box. Normally I use several, but there's only going to be five of you, and I use my own devices, and I'll explain what all of those do too. So what is exactly is a spirit box? It's basically a radio sweeper. It's going to go through radio stations very, very quickly, and you have it set up to FM at 250 milliseconds per station. What does that mean for you? Absolutely nothing. Okay. It's a little bit slower, so you guys are amateurs. Your TV shows are going to set it to super fast because they don't want any radio DJs or commercials or any of that stuff coming through. You are going to listen because you're very chatty. I was sizing all you up. Oh, you know I'm chatty. <laughs> I was like, what did you tell them? I write books. You can't tell oh, them about yeah. characters. So, what you're listening for, DJs, commercials, song lyrics, you're going to hear those things. If you can make out what they say, that's what I want. Okay. Now, the cool thing about this particular one, it records everything even when it's on mute. So, when I turn it on, the volume's going to be down, and once I hit that record button, it's going to keep it at one even level for the whole thing. So when you guys, Wes? Yes, sorry about that. Oh, you're good, come on in, man. You're good, you're good. You're just you're right in the middle of the teaching train. All right, sweet. So we have a thermal imaging camera going on over here, just so you know. She's going to help the bunch of the things we're gonna see on there. And you guys are gonna get that video back. Part of this whole deal. This is like a flare, basically, right yeah, here. Yeah, exactly. Right. Without the roll for any yet. Hell, he ain't gonna hit me. Yeah, no, he won't. <laughs> <laughs> Alright, so I'm gonna go ahead and turn up the spirit box and kind of give you a gist of what it sounds like. But again, it's already recording, so. Oh. I heard station. Enjoy it. So you see how I'm listening for those specific things? For the same Any kind of voices that come through. So again, radio DJs, commercial song lyrics, or disembodied voices. So if you hear something that's like kind of going over top of that static and is lasting for several click of stations, that's what I call a disembodied voice. Again, this is going to be a full recording for you guys in the morning. Should we turn off our phones? Or just turn, turn them off? Just Whatever you guys want. It's your tour. You guys want them on? Turn them on. Yeah, it's not going to hurt anything. Okay. It's not going to record us. Oh, okay. Cool. Oh, okay. Yeah, this will not record us. It is literally at one even level. I don't know how it does it, but that's one of the reasons why I bought it, is because it does record even on mute. All you need to know, there's a wheel right here at the top that turns it up mm -hmm. and turns it down. Okay. You hit that button right there, it'll shut it off, mm -hmm. and then we have to reset it up and you have two files. Okay. Okay? Got it. So, we're going to leave it down. Obviously, while I'm talking and giving you guys some stories, and then when I say spirit box is up, that's when you'll go ahead and fire yours up. Why would you need to cut it off? Do we need to leave it on the whole time? Yeah, no, I'm saying don't power it down. Okay. Just let it do what it's doing. All you need to know is that, that wheel, the volume wheel. That's it. I wasn't sure how much the temperature would drop, so I didn't want to do It's actually supposed to go down to... Uh, it's supposed to drop in the 50s, yeah. It's yeah. supposed to get down pretty far. Yeah. That's good. 50s? That's, I mean, I've got three shirts on today. All right. Yeah, but I don't mind loving stuff. I think I'm actually going to try uh, my, new, my new little device with you. So, Sean, these are going to go to you. You're going to erase everybody's memory. Because this is a neuralizer from Men in Black. Yeah, that's what he would love to do. Love to have one. Look at it. It's oh, a great thing. Oh, cool. So what does this guy do? So in the event we actually come across something, it helps us see things we can't see with the naked eye. See how my hand flashes in there? We're not looking at the dots on the ground. We're looking at my hand. So it's literally going to be, if everybody can kind of look at my forehead for a second. I'll back up. 
you guys see that out of your peripheral vision? Mm -hmm. That's what we're looking for. So it's not going to stay in there long. It's literally going to be a flash. This one will burn up after about five minutes. We try not to be burning it up too much. It's also a laser. You could probably point up some of these TVs in the distance. That's how strong it is. So again, that is a point it straight down, and you literally let it go about five feet in front of you. But that's as far as that one will go legally without getting me arrested. <laughs> The next one actually gives us squares. Why do we use squares instead of the dots? Well, we use both. So this one, if we capture something in here and get it on video, or I'm quick enough with my phone to switch it over to camera and I get a picture of it, I can then put it in 3D software, and then we have a full 3D view of the operation. Because 3D software actually uses squares, correct? So again, we'll have a full 3D view. I have not caught anything with this yet. It's still relatively new. Um, hopefully, you'll be the first one. So we're going to go double fisted with you too. Alright. So, we should all know what one of these is if you're a ghost hunting show fan, right? But they never explain what it actually does. Okay, it's an EMF oh, yeah. meter. Okay, so uh, what does it do? It measures three different types of electromagnetic fields. The first one is natural. comes from the Earth. It's green. That's why it's right there. Mm -hmm. The second one is going to be from man-made objects. Your cell phone, wiring, those kind of things. It would literally have to be right on top of it. That's why I said don't worry about your phones. Like, it would literally have to be right there for it to be able to do it. Okay, so it's going to give us a pulse. We don't want that either. We don't want any kind of rhythm that we can make out and tap with to and maybe snap a few fingers. We want that erraticism. We want it to go absolutely bonkers and kind of debunk what's happening. It doesn't make any noise. So it's kind of one of those you're going to be the first indication that something's actually happening. I also want you all to keep in mind, I don't get excited if that's the only thing that's happening. If none of the rest of the devices are doing anything, I have nothing else to look at because that's not recording. That's just telling us something's happening. Does that make sense? Okay. This new device is very interesting. So, what's today? Tuesday? So, Saturday night, I had two tours and I just tested it out just to see if it was going to work. It's, the theory is, is that spirits can manifest based off of batteries. And that's why you hear that batteries drain from different devices on your TV shows. My camera won't work or whatever. My cell phone just died. This is a battery tester. So we're gonna take a look to see where this battery's at, and then by the end of the tour, we're gonna see where it's at. Now Saturday, my first tour, it drained it. My second tour, new battery, did nothing. There's my proof. That's enough for me. Now, it's got rubber bands on it to keep everything in place, so you can just kind of pocket this, we'll pull it out from time to time, just kind of see where we're at. But I do want to show everybody that the battery is at the top of the yellow. I'll expect it to be at the bottom of the yellow because it will use some of the juice from the battery just move the needle. So before I hand it off, see that needle in there? So it's at the top of the yellow now, almost to the green. So if it starts moving into the red, I'm going to expect it to be slightly into the red by the end of our video. That's normal. It goes further than that, something obviously drains it. We'll pull it out from time to time. Staring at a needle all night is not going to be any good. All right, last but I mean, there are other devices in there, guys, but we have all the good stuff that's going to record everything. So that's that's the whole key. You want to try to keep that horizontal because that goes to YouTube. And if I got a flip video, it's never fun either. It's just as bad as <laughs> splicing 30 videos together, Mike. Sorry, not to be very direct, but you guys want good evidence. So I do use a couple of different things on my phone. Probably thinking, what the heck is your phone doing? So, I do keep a backup EMF in case this battery is drained. Not that I don't have spare batteries, but if we need something in a pinch, I got it. It's not as sensitive, but it does work. I do use two different spirit boxes on my phone. The first one is actually going to give us words right in the center of the screen. So, right there in the center where those three dots are. The cool thing is, is it saves the entire list. The last tour that I did, they had 79 entries. Now, 80% of this is bullshit. It doesn't mean a damn thing. <laughs> The other 15 or 20 percent is where I start diving in and things start making sense. I have had people text me the next day and say, I don't want to say anything, but I'm pregnant. And I just said belly and baby. Wow. So that kind of tells you what actually happens here. So it does save those words for us. And then you get that entire word list back. And if it's verifiable, I send you the link to verify what's actually happening. And those are words that I miss on the list, right? No. How is that getting it? Is your phone is a sensor one? So, the, it's not actually, like, 
it says that it works off of FM radio stations. Now, my theory, and some people investigate, I know that there's no FM station that's going through this app. That's the bullshit part. That's why 80% of it. It's meant to be a game robber. But my belief is you even have an FM receiver in your right there. So the other app I'm going to show you has the same claim, but I debunked that of how they say it works. But my theory is that all of you have electronic devices, including the battery test. They're all electronic. We're not using Ouija boards or tarot cards or dowsing rods, nothing manual. It's the spirit world that can manipulate electronics. That's where this guy comes into play. So I got the word creed. So. Again, I will try, always try to relate to whatever pops up, but I, I know in the back of my head, 80% of it's bullshit. And there are some nights I've only gotten one or two words that actually made sense. Hmm. Concentrate. It's telling me to move on. <laughs> <laughs> now this next one is literally, they claimed that this was FM radio stations being flipped backwards. It's wrong. I actually have software to flip it the opposite way to go the correct way so we can actually hear what it is. And it is literally just a recording of words being said from a female. That's it. However, the EMFs that I get off of this, or the EVPs I get off of this, are ridiculous. It is in reverse. I keep it in reverse. But in the event I actually get an intelligent response, or hear the word come through forward, so it's a question that I, I ask, then I know I have something. For example, and I'll play this, well, I'm gonna play this for you first so you guys know what you're listening for. I'm gonna record everything audio-wise as well. It stays on me. That way you guys can hear what's happening here. So when the traffic dies down, you'll be able to get the gist of what this is. So it's just people talking, put in reverse. So in the event I actually hear something come through forwards, I know I got something. So last week. That's kind of neat. It is. It's it's an interesting gadget. So that's what I use when I'm trying to communicate. So there's a few times where I actually break away from you for a few minutes and kind of keep an eye on things. But there are certain things like I'll ask just to see if the answer is going to go to another device. So let me just. So this is like the Exorcist thing. Yeah, so they are in English. Language. Yeah, yeah, but they're they're just saying random words. This is an EVP that I caught a couple weeks ago over at the Pinckney Mansion site. And Eliza Pinckney is actually from England. And this didn't make sense to me then, but then a guest told me later why it made sense. I didn't even ask a question related to it. So let me turn this up and I'll play it several times. Breakfast. Breakfast. Beans breakfast. And it's pretty clear. Stupid traffic. So, why is that relevant? Because on that spirit box, I had I'll fix you. And then on the word list at the same timestamps within like three to four minutes, can't remember the exact timestamp, I had I'll fix you, baked beans breakfast, and the word tea came up on the digital list. So those are all British terms. It was almost like there was a full sentence being put together for us. Yeah. So to me, I was like, holy snapples. <laughs> like that was a lot. So it all made sense after, like I was like, baked beans breakfast, that makes no sense. I didn't even know that that was a thing over here. So at any rate, I use both of these spirit boxes at the same time. So all I have to do is turn the volume up and then I keep the digital wordless spirit box going at all times. So again, we're already getting words. Again, creed, concentrate, and throat. So that's what we have so far. But again, it doesn't run unless it's actually on the screen. So let me turn your audio on. I forgot to ask, where are my skeptics? Who's a non-believer? Anybody? Okay. We all have to prove him wrong by the end of the yeah. evening. September 22nd, 9 p.m. tour. So you guys will get the full audio, the full video, digital spirit box, word list, the 
regular spirit box recording. And again, it does not record us, it only records those stations. So we started here for a reason. This is Big John's. It used to be back in the 1970s. Big John was a football player for the 1947 Giants. His last name was Kennedy. So John Kennedy. Um, so anyway, he used to sit in the back of the bar. Let's go ahead and keep that down. I'm not a big loud talker. Yeah, I'm like, oh, what am I listening for? I'm like, yeah, nothing yet. Okay. So he used to sit in the back of the bar and kind of nod off to the bartender if the cadets were of age or not. One night he did that, told the, uh, the bartender, cut him off. These guys aren't old enough to drink. These two guys get pissed off, they leave. The next night they come back, they steal the cash register from the front of the restaurant, in front of the bar. So Big John pulls out his gun, shoots one, takes him out bullet hole ricocheted and is in the hall and in, in the wall of the front of this that's inside it's not outside it's inside oh. previous <laughs> owner she thinks everything's a bullet we hole took a, we took a picture I was like that's yeah. a bullet hole behind <laughs> us okay. so it is said that people that sit in the front of this bar can sometimes feel queasy dizzy headaches those kind of things that's paranormal activity at its finest I've only gotten EV, like EMF from your de your device in the front of this bar randomly that's a good thing. Why is that a good thing? Because that proves to me that it's not a man-made object with a lamp, electricity in the walls, or whatever. It's literally random, and I've been in there dozens of times when I was being public. Other thing that actually happened here, allegedly the first death from the 1886 earthquake in Charleston happened here. A piece of man flying in front of the building allegedly hit somebody in the head and killed him. And his ghost is said to be seen right here on East Bay Street. However, I don't have proof, so it is hearsay at this point. But again, I do get EMF when I'm at this building. So, you guys ready to roll? Alright. All right. Uh, well, I'll tell you when the spirit box is up. We're going to head down this way. I got, he said I got to keep it level and recording. <laughs> He's got a job. is haunted it's not a whole lot of story here so this is a good place for me to let you guys kind of toy around with what you have and then you guys can ask me a million questions so let me kind of give you the gist and skinny of what's actually happening here so first off the crew cafe over there is haunted um, they did ask me to do a walkthrough and I took the EMF with me I did get a little bit of a spike upstairs I could probably debunk it after about an hour or so depending on the wiring um, but they say that there was a suicide there um, however that used to be a slave home it hasn't mattered <coughs> Um, I don't know if that's a reconstruct or an expansion or what it is. I'm guessing it's a reconstruct. But there's no news, there's no anything that proves that there was a suicide that actually happened there. So, it's very hard to get those kind of details. I'm not, I'm not saying I'm not excited about it. It'd be great to have something so close to the tour, but I don't think there's actually anything there. Uh, for your history buffs, the stop sign down there, according to the Mark Jones website, another author here in town, uh, the Revolutionary War, the Charleston Peninsula was actually much skinnier. So all the stuff on the edges of the town, and they stuck. So Revolutionary War, the ship rolls in, the water goes away, shoots a cannon, a cannonball lands right at that stop sign. But that's no tragedy, it's no paranormal activity, just one of those little history nuggets that I like to add to the tour. I'm like, hey, I found that, I'm like, hey, that's not bad. So where are you guys standing? This is a red barn lot where they keep the horses for the paradrives. So you guys, who took a paradrive before? <coughs> you guys, right? Okay. So the ponies are still in there. So I'm going to ask all of you with lasers, that would be <laughs> infrared, and the two that you have, absolutely nothing on those windows or on the building whatsoever. It's the same horse barn where they kept the horses that delivered milk to Charleston. So that kind of dates it for you. There's a little bit of age here. 
Now, spirit boxes. Well, there's only one being in use. So let me kind of give you the gist of what you should be doing with the spirit box. You will be asking questions, but you're going to ask non-yes or no questions. Yeses and nos, according to our English phonetic language, are really easy to decipher because it's very common. We don't want yeses or nos. We want stuff like, what color is the bar? You know you're listening for the color red. We're giving you these easy ones here because it gets, it's going to get harder as we go. Say, so what's inside the bar? You know the answer is force. You know, who is here? That answer you don't know. Not is somebody here? Because some jokester yeah. ghost is going to tell you, no, nope, I'm not here. <laughs> yeah. That's how that's going to go. It's that happened was before. Cool. Oh. Yeah, it happens, unfortunately. It's really hard to stop and think how to rephrase a question to get a direct answer that's not yes or no. So that's really what you're going to be doing. But you're going to ask one question once every 20 to 30 seconds until you get an answer. If you don't get an answer, you got to pretend like that person's right, right in front of you. Like they are. They're just waiting for you to be comfortable with them enough to say, Okay, I'm gonna change the question. Can you tell me what's inside the barn then? You know, third person in front of you. Wait for the answer. And the answer might not go there. You might not hear it. it. Might come up here, might come up on the audio there, or on the audio over here. We never know. When we actually separate a little bit, I ask odd questions that I didn't give you suggestions for to see if the answer comes up somewhere else. But you're the only other one with a spirit box. So you're gonna be the one to say, Nick, what the heck does blue door mean? I'm like, oh, I asked what color was the door of this specific house. Oh, yeah. Right, and I'll ask those odd questions so that way it doesn't make sense to you, but it'll make sense to the whole group when I say on the audio, you'll hear I ask, what color is the door of, of the middle town? If it says blue door, then you know we have a legitimate compelling answer. Does that make sense to you? Nice slow sweeps on your thermal imaging camera. So you're basically going to be walking around and then you're going to kind of follow up with him and shoot with your infrared and make sure that the temperatures are somewhat lined up. Now they're not in sync, they're probably going to be about three to four degrees off. But again, if you see something cold, you need to be shooting in that area to make sure it's not a surface, or make sure it is a surface before we kind of debunk it with the yellow device that I gave you. Okay. Your EMF is already actually giving us a little bit of activity, as you can see. Again, we're not yeah. looking for those rhythms or patterns. Um, Let's go to my phone. Uh, it started before you pulled out your phone. <coughs> well, no, because I was holding it next to my phone. I just put an air for mugs. No, I'll okay. say. But now, yeah, well, now it's doing something. That's an airplane mode. That's kind yeah, of weird. Be, yeah. You'll be my focus for the night because you're the guy I need to convince otherwise. Um, uh -huh. <laughs> I'm just going to go completely off. Why are you looking at me? Hey, you too bad. We're walking on two lines. I didn't mess with you. Get down lower. We're going to get strong enough here. Even the box on the barn and the pole over there are not strong enough to. I'll tell you in certain places, like on East State Street, it's going to be the parking meters that are going to make it go. Those electrical lines are going to need to be fed. Same thing with the electrical crossing. That's where the electrical lines are going to tell them before we go on East State Street. It's pretty exciting. So, this is it. You want those pointing straight down and don't cross the street. Focus on the Nobody got the Ghostbusters here? Really? <laughs> oh, yeah! <laughs> He's the right. movie boss. So, straight down, keep them kind of separated. And again, about five, just spread them out to like they're five feet in front of you. And you're literally just looking for those glimpses. It's just going to be something passing through. And of course, you can help listen in. I kind of want to give you those so that way you can still help listen in on the spirit box. Because a lot of times I'll get a spirit box of two people so that way they can verify each other, especially the other one that doesn't record. That one definitely goes to two people. All right, so I'm going to let's free you guys up. We're going to stay within the lot and I'm going to bounce around with all of you and see kind of see what's actually happening. So let's take it from here. Turn your spirit box up. If you're going to go, don't go super loud near those windows. Oh, yeah, no. Okay. Right. Let's find you a good hot spot. Kind of crowded. Mm -hmm. Um, I'm going to go to that one. Um, I just always find an extension. There's a lot of different angles. And I like the storytelling. You're looking for blue areas, right? Yeah, everything red. Hey, that's blue over there. That's the sky. Damn. Okay, so that looks I'm 
at 72. Where's the MLK leave? Oh, I'm at 60, 3.5. I'm at 70. That's 7. And that's over here. Well, that's, just, uh, that's at the door. No, I'm over here. And I'm at 65.3. Catch that door right there. What door? Over right here? Right there. Go over some more. 67. Okay, go over to your right some more. 67. 66. Okay, and I'm reading 70. Hell, I can't see it. Okay. 70. I got 65. Nothing. Great verbalizer, what time is it? Huh? <laughs> Should have had the bushes over.